Hey friends, this is Dr. Pete with my son Eli, and we're starting a new series on conversations. And today we're going to talk about faith. Mm -hmm. What is faith? You know, uh, faith is is that thing that you know you really believe in God even when you don't see it in front of you. It's something that 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 when you're walking out the call of God on your life, it's it's not based on what you see. It's not based on on the things, the situations going around you. It's simply based on trusting in God. Yeah, and that, that's one of the things that we w really want to break down because there's so many things in the body of Christ, there's so many things in Scripture that if we're not careful, they all kind of run together. Mm. So we assume that faith is trust and trust is hope, and but God's very, very strategic. And I believe if we go into the Word of God, ask God to give us revelation, He begins to reveal the secret things of heaven for us. And God wants to begin to reveal to all of us, because the Bible says in Hebrews 11:6, mm. without faith it's impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So I want to put something and kind of start with something. Faith is not something we do to get something. Faith is an impartation from the living God that says, it is so. Faith is when the word of God, the truth and the reality of heaven, becomes the conviction of our heart in what we're fully convinced of. See, it's not okay to just say, well, I have faith, I believe mm. in God. Yeah. Or I believe the word of God intellectually. It's great that you believe the word of God intellectually, but faith is when the word of God actually becomes what I'm fully convinced of. Mm. And when faith becomes, and the word of God becomes what I'm fully convinced of, I enter into the realm of faith and it brings rest to us. Mm. You know, just for scripture wise, um, something that came to me was Romans 10, 17. And so it says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so break down that scripture. What does that, what does that actually mean practically? Because I know we can read scripture and not necessarily understand it, and we're like, okay, that's great, I under, you know, that says that, but what does that mean? So faith comes, it's such a good scripture, faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God, okay? What does that mean? The hearing is, it's a word, it's the word of God, so when I'm spending time reading the word of God, and all of a sudden, that one day it's quickened in my spirit, it becomes a rhema word, the Bible says. It becomes alive and activated in my spirit, and it becomes goes from my intellect to what I'm fully convinced of. So watch this. So I read the word of God, and, and God, through his word, says he's my healer. He's my Jehovah Rapha. He sends his word, and it heals. How amazing is that promise from the word of God that he wants to be our healer? But faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. One day, it's when it's quickened to me. It says, wow. No, literally, God's my mm. healer. That he's my Jehovah Rapha. Or maybe it's the simple fact that God loves me. Mm. It's, wow, God really loves me. It's not just something I know intellectually anymore. I'm literally, it's convinced. quickened in my spirit, and I'm now convinced of it. Mm. You know, I think, too, there's so many things in the body of Christ. One of the biggest things to be... One of the biggest revelations I had when it came to God's love for us and it was like Jesus for me or not is yeah. when the Lord quickened in me that says, hey, look at my cross. Mm. My cross is a sign that you were worth dying for. And when that became quickened in my spirit, that my life in the eyes of God was worth dying for, mm. I go, wow, I, I never have to question again whether God loves me or not. So faith comes by hearing. So I spend time reading the word yeah. of God, spending time meditating on his word, the water of his word. And then there's that one day water turns into wine. Water literally is activated mm. in the word of God is activated in my heart and it becomes what I'm fully convinced of. So, so practically wise, so say, you know, just ordinary person. Uh, go to work, going to school, whatever they're doing in their normal everyday life. How do you practically walk out faith? It's so good. One of the biggest things is to understand this, okay? What's truth? And then what are facts? So we are born into this world. Mm. And 
the, this, the reality of this natural world are the facts of life. I don't have to deny the facts of life. It's a fact that this is a table. It's a fact that there's gravity. Those are facts of life. It's a fact what the doctor says. It's a fact what's in my bank account. We don't have to deny those facts. But as a child of God, I live according to a different reality. The mm. Bible says I'm a new creation in Christ. Mm. I'm a citizen of heaven. I've come now as a child of God to represent heaven on the earth. So what's the reality of my new life as a child of God? What's the reality of citizenship in heaven truth okay so what is truth jesus says he is the way the truth and the life what is truth the bible the entirety of the word of god is truth the holy spirit is the spirit of truth who i am now that christ has come is truth and when truth becomes what i'm fully convinced of i enter into a realm of faith mm. so how do i get to that point okay by meditating on his word, by spending time getting to know Jesus. He, Jesus is the word of God in print, okay? Mm. Or the word of God, like, uh, so the Bible is Jesus in print. He is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. And so one of the things that I do is I spend time in the gospels, looking at the red letters, if you have a red letter version, and I just get to know Jesus. He's yeah. the author and the finisher of my faith. And I begin to see and live from his perspective and all of a sudden, I begin to go, wow, hmm. dude, that's amazing. Yeah. And I begin to say, okay, there's, there's a moment in my life where I was taking my circumstances and considering my circumstances and what I went through, the reality of my life, and then I tried to apply scripture to it. Yeah. And then I came to a point that says, no, I'm going to take the word of God and make that the reality of my life because I'm a child of God, in regardless of the, if I've ever experienced it before in my life or not, mm. I'm going to stand on the word of God. The Bible says Jesus, that I hold my word above his own. Jesus says the word of God is held above his own name. Mm. The word of God will never fail. It's the reality of my new life in Christ. So if the word of God says, by his stripes I'm healed, if the word of God says he sends his word and it heals, then even if I have never experienced it in the natural world, yeah. That's my new reality. The word of God says he supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory, that he's my Jehovah Jireh, that he's my provider, that he's my shepherd, I shall not want, I should never be in need because he supplies all my needs according to his riches. Then I'm going to let that be my reality. Now, sometimes we know that intellectually and we're not convinced of it. Yeah. So when I'm not convinced of truth, it carries a yoke with it. Hmm. But the Bible says in Hebrews 4, then come boldly into my presence to obtain grace and mercy in time of need. And I'm going to allow you to see from my perspective again. And so spending t in, in a nutshell, spending time with Jesus, spending time in the word of God, meditating on the word day in and day out, mm. allows his word to be quickened and made alive in my spirit. So I begin to take on the perspective of heaven. Faith is the vantage point of heaven mm. when I'm fully convinced of truth in my life. Amen. Um, you know, I know many people always ask me questions of, okay, I'm not a part of a ministry. I'm not a part of whatever. How do I see God move through my life in the mm. workplace, right? And, and I, th I think people assume that you can only witness God a part of a ministry. Mm. When I, I feel like, you know, the whole mission was to go out, mm -hmm. yeah. right? You know, the Bible says that we're ambassadors of, ambassadors of heaven, citizens of Christ, mm. and everyone should do the work of an evangelist, okay? So we all have a purpose in this life. And in Christ now, mm. what is our purpose? Our purpose is to bear his image, which means to walk in love. And a sign that you know God intimately is that you begin to take on his nature and you walk in love. And the second thing is God says he wants us to shine. Mm. How do I shine? By living from the vantage point of heaven. Walking by faith. Yeah. So there's two evidences of our life in Christ. When I'm a child of God, the sign that I'm a child of God is I walk in love and I live by faith. Mm. I live by the vantage point of heaven. Those are the litmus tests. And it's through intimacy that we do that. And so how do I walk out my life in the marketplace? Every day I get to bear his image. Mm. Every day I get to shine and live from the vantage point of heaven. 
Every day I get to use my skill sets and the gifts that God's given me. The Bible says having gifts differing according to the grace given to us, use those gifts. And yeah. so I get to use the gifts, steward the gifts of my life, and then my life gets to be a reward for others. So the assignment mm. is each and every day, God desires for our life to simply be a reward for others. So my purpose, the why behind my life, to bear his image, to mm. shine. The calling or the gifts of my life, I'm called to steward over. And then the assignment is my life is created to be a reward for others. And so no matter what circumstance you find yourself in, allow your life to bear his image, walk mm. in love, allow your life to shine and live from the vantage point of heaven. Steward your day, steward the gifts on your life. Make sure that you continue to cultivate those gifts. Steward your relationships with which are a gift. Steward your finances, which are a mm. gift. There's spiritual gifts that we'll talk about in later episodes. And then use it for the benefit of others. And so really... Our lives are there to just be his mm. and a reward for others in this world. Mm. You know, uh, ever since, you know, I started walking with the Lord, I would always see the power of God move. And, you know, this is what the word told us, right? In the end of Mark 16, it talks about, it says, go ahead and lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And so when I read that verse, I said, okay, God, I'll go pray for people. And I started going praying for people, and I started seeing these things happen. So, you know, even when you're looking in John 14, 12, it says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. You know, what is he talking about there? Is he talking about just seeing miracles happen? Is he talking about... Um, you know, what, what's he talking about? No, watch this. This is the word of God. We're not talking like so, so many people in the body of Christ, they read a lot of books. Mm. And I'm an author of some books, and that's great. But spend your time reading the word of God. Spend your time meditating on the word of God. When the Bible says that greater works will we do than even he did, why? I believe it. Mm. When he says that all things are possible to those who believe, I believe it. When the word of God says, lay hands on the sick and they shall, shall recover, I believe it. Jesus literally paid the way so that I can come back into relationship with yeah. God. An heir of God, a joint heir with Christ. The spirit of God lives within me. Christ in me, the hope, the confident mm. expectation of heaven and his attributes manifesting my life. And my encouragement for you watching is that... If the word of God says it, let's just believe it. Yeah. Even if you've never experienced it in your life personally, mm. I want you to stand on the word of God. Begin to hold the word of God above your experiences and situations. Amen. The word of God has many, many promises. The promises of God are the reality of your new life in Christ. When God says he'll never leave you nor forsake you, yeah. You, you can go to the bank with it. When God says he is for you and not against you, when God says he's an ever-present help in a time of need, when God says he's your El Shaddai, mm. your God of more than enough, no matter what circumstances of life look like, look like, I would say this. Even when life gets difficult, say, Lord, I surrender my life to you today. I surrender these circumstances to you. Mm. I offer you my life, and I ask that you would take my life and simply use it for your glory. But I'm going to choose this day that I'm going to serve the Lord. And I'm going to choose this day that I'm going to stand on the word of God and the promises that are yes amen. and amen. Amen. Um, something that, that I heard uh, very recently, honestly, is, you know, a lot of people have a fear of when going to pray for, for someone for a miracle to happen. They have this fear that it's not going to happen. And so they don't go pray for them. And what happens is, is if you have that fear and you don't go pray for someone, that fear just, you know, actually happened because you didn't go and pray for them. So you're so fearful of not seeing a miracle happen that you wouldn't go pray for them. And so you never gave God that opportunity to actually yep. do the miracle. And so the very thing that you're afraid of just yep. happened because you didn't step out. And, you know, and, and I want to encourage you that, that, all we can do is just be willing to say yes to God. All we can do is just step out and say, you know what? I'm going to believe God and I'm going to step out and pray for him. And I'm not going to worry about what happens afterwards. I am just going to step in and say, God, I am willing to be used by you. Yeah. And I think so often 
people just don't realize, like, the Bible says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But if you don't lay hands on the sick, then how can you expect yeah. something to happen? <laughs> like, if you don't go pray for someone, like, you, the worst thing, like, the least we can do is just be obedient to what God's called mm. us to. Worst case, nothing happens. Yeah. Like, if you're sick and nothing happens... We're not out of anything. Yep. But can you imagine the possibilities when we mm. simply walk in obedience and we do what God's called us to do? I remember early on, years ago, when I began to go around the world and share Jesus Christ, this gift of eternal life for the entire world, that it wasn't for a certain group of people, not for a certain nationality, not for a certain religious denomination, but for God so loved mm. the world that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that Jesus is not a historical figure. Mm. He's the living God that came. Why do you think Jesus is the most polarizing person on the planet? Because he's the only way to eternal life. Mm. Yeah. But he came because he desires a relationship with each and every one of us. And I remember early on when I began to go around the world and share Christ, the Lord said, son, you have authority over all the power of the enemy. I want mm. you to take that authority. Amen. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. That means whatever I don't allow on earth is not allowed in heaven. Whatever I allow on earth is allowed in heaven. So he said, I want you to go and bind the spirit of sickness and disease, mm. bind the spirit of blindness, bind the spirit of deafness, bind the spirit of cancer, and release the spirit of life and healing and mm. watch what I do. But then he said this, he says, if you lay hands on a thousand people that are deaf and you never see a deaf healed, do you still believe I healed the deaf? And I had to come to that aha moment that said, yes, Lord. It's like come to Jesus mm. moment. I said, yes, but only because your word says it. Because remember, I'm going to choose to hold his word, the Bible, over my own experiences. Yeah. And he says, if you will simply be obedient to always make sure that the conviction of your heart is the word of God, regardless of what you see in the natural. Mm. One day, I will, it will pop everywhere you go. And that's what happens all around the world. So mm. many miracles of it just simply God moving. In spite of us, mm. not because of us, but simply because said, we, Lord, we're a willing vessel to yeah. be used by you. And I think that's what it comes down to. I think it comes down to us just giving our yes. Us giving our yes to him. Us surrendering our, surrendering our lives to him, right? It's like that's what... That's what it talks about when you come to Jesus, right? It says you're a new creation. Your old life is dead and gone. And so um, that's what it means. It's, it's, it's surrendering your whole life to him. It's all in with Jesus. It's all in. And so um, this is just kind of a question that I know a lot of people probably watching this video have is how do you begin to hear God's voice? I, you know, if they've never felt like they heard God's voice before and they're seeking him and, and they're really going after him, how do they... How do they know? How do they hear God's voice? I think the biggest thing is spending time with God. So know this. You cannot come to Jesus unless you hear God calling you and the mm. Spirit of God calling you. So the fact that you've come to that aha moment that realized that, wow, my life was never created to be outside or separated from God wow. through Jesus Christ. I was created to be in relationship with him. And when I come to that aha moment, it's because the spirit of God is knocking on the door of your heart and says, Amen. you are worth it. You are significant. Your life matters to God. And then as I begin, begin to grow my relationship with God by spending time and getting to know Jesus through the word of God, getting to know mm. the word of God, spending time in worship and in intimacy, getting to surrounding myself with others that love Jesus, the more I get to know him and his word, the more I begin to understand his voice and what he sounds like in his nature and in his character. I remember my brother-in-law is a president of a bank. And one day I asked him, I said, hey, Justin, you know, how do you know if someone comes to the bank with counterfeit money? I said, do you have to study certain counterfeits? And he kind of looked at me and laughed. He goes, what do you mean? I go, well, how do you study to know that if a dollar bill is counterfeit? Mm. And he says, well, we study the real thing. The real thing comes through our hands so much that we would know a counterfeit from a mile away. Get to know God. Mm. Get to know his word. Get to know his character, that he's love and his nature is love and he's patient and kind and long-suffering and gentle. Get to know him. And then when a counterfeit voice comes, you'll know it from a mile away. Mm. We get to know his voice more intimately through intimacy by spending time 
God gave us a re- uh, the privilege to be in relationship Amen. with the living God. Mm. How amazing is that? Our relationship with the creator of the heavens and the earth. Mm. Amen. Um, you know, I think it's so, so crucial uh, to walk out everyday life by spending time with him. You know, being filled up by him in the secret place. I think it's so important for all of us to spend time with God to start our day with God, to, to be immersed. Like He wants to be a part of every single moment of your day. He wants to be a part of it all. He wants to be a part of everything that you're doing. And so what I want to encourage you is, is just invite him in. Invite him in to be a part of everything you're doing today and tomorrow and the next day and from every day on from now on. And, and that's going to help grow that relationship with him because honestly, if you think about it, how, how much time do you spend with your significant other? How much time do you spend with your parents? How much time do you spend talking to your brother, sister, your best friend, right? But then how much time do we spend with Jesus? That's how we should look at it is, man, I, I need to spend time with him. Yeah. And when we spend time with him, the Bible says in 1 John 4 mm. that we begin to take on his nature. This is a sign that you know him, you walk in love. We take on the nature of God. Do you know that Jesus came to free us from ourselves, to restore us back to innocence once again, and re- and restore his image mm-hmm. back into our life, and his image is love. We were created in the image of God, and through relationship with God in the garden, Adam and Eve were possessors of his nature. They were mm-hmm. recipients and conduits of his goodness, and their expressions of his love throughout the earth. Then when sin came into the world, Literally, sin came and man became self-centered and took on an earthly perspective, Mm. okay? Well, Jesus came, the Bible says, to restore that which was lost. What was lost? A godly nature and a heavenly perspective. And God came to restore that back into my life by making me a new creation. That means Mm. I have a new DNA. I'm born again in the family of God. I have his nature. Mm. And a citizen of heaven, which means I have the privilege to live from heaven's perspective. Faith to reiterate is an impartation from the living God where the word of God, the truth and the reality of heaven and who I am now that Christ has come becomes the conviction of my heart and what I'm fully convinced of. And that occurs by spending time with God and allowing it to be quickened in your life. Mm. Friends, if you are watching and maybe you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, maybe you've never come to that point point, you say, I want a relationship with God. Let me tell you this. Mm. You were created in the image and likeness of God. You were created by God for relationship with him. And it's like without a relationship with God, it's like you're a fish out of water. That's Mm. not supposed to happen. You were created by God and for him. And so if you've never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to encourage you to simply pray this prayer after me. I'm going to Mm. lead you in a prayer of salvation. It's a prayer of surrender between you and the living God. Just say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, and I surrender my life to you. I confess that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. So today, I repent and turn away from my life of sin, and I surrender, and I give my life to you, Lord Jesus. I believe that you are the one and only true and perfect God, and salvation only occurs through faith in Jesus Christ. And I believe that when you died on the cross and rose from the dead, it completely paid for the sins that were on my life. So I invite you into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Friend, if you just prayed that simple prayer, you are now a child of God. I welcome you into the family of God. Continue to follow this channel mm-hmm. to, to kind of continue to grow in your relationship with the living God. But before we close... I would like Eli to simply pray over each of you. So if you are sick in your body, Eli is going to pray over you that God would touch you. I believe the power of God is going to touch you right where you're at. It's going to feel like a warmth of electricity go through your body. And I believe supernatural things will begin to take place. And many of you watching will instantly realize that the pain, the sickness, the disease is no longer there. And for Mm. some of you that have a medical condition, that if you were healed, you might not feel it. When you go to the doctor next time, the doctor will confirm that the condition is no longer there. I want you to know, though, in advance, it's because Jesus Christ has healed you by watching this show. Eli, go ahead and pray them out. Amen.
Um, Heavenly Father, I just welcome you. I welcome you for everyone watching this video, Lord, that Holy Spirit, you would be in their presence right now in Jesus' name. Right now, I bind the spirit of sickness and disease, and I command it to get out, and I release healing, and I release healing over them right now in Jesus' name. I thank you that miracles and healing are taking place right now, Lord. I just bind the spirit of blindness, Lord. I command it to leave right now in Jesus' name. I bind the spirit of cancer. I command it to leave right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would just go in completely, completely touch them right now, Jesus. In Jesus' name, that they would be completely healed right now. In Jesus, Jesus' mighty name, amen. Friends, it was an honor to be with you. Conversations with my son, Eli. I'm Dr. Pete. We will see you next time.